Hey everyone, this is May 6, and you are watching our community briefings that are held uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, this is uh, going to be a, uh, a, a long briefing. We have a lot of information to share, uh, a lot of news to put out to the community as well as to the media. And so I'm going to ask everyone to be uh, patient. We have a lot of data to share, and I think some, some good news about where we're going today. I want to thank um, Alice Castellanos from the Long Beach Health Department, who is going to be doing a Spanish translation summary at the end after the questions, like she does at every briefing. And we have Dr. Davis from the Long Beach Health Department, who leads, of course, our, our health team and our medical team, uh, who will be also giving a lot of statistics and some numbers today uh, as soon as I'm done with my remarks. And I also want to thank uh, Paola, who, of course, is doing our ASL translation uh, as she normally does. I want to begin by saying that um, this is, I know, has been a difficult few weeks. Uh, our safer at home uh, orders uh, have been uh, hard. They, it's been hard, I know, for a lot of people to stay indoors, to stay at home, uh, to not enjoy our parks. Um, to many workers, it's been devastating. Uh, to small business owners uh, who want to be able to reopen their business, it has been a very difficult time, and we are very aware of that. Uh, we're also aware that we are living in an unprecedented health crisis. Uh, and this crisis requires us uh, as a city to come together and to support, uh, first and foremost, the most vulnerable people in our community. And in our case in Long Beach, that is our seniors and people with underlying health conditions. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about two major areas. Uh, the first, which I'm going to talk to you, is I'm going to walk you through the data and what we've been doing to meet uh, our expectations and our goals as it relates to this first stage that we are in of reopening. And then I'm going to talk to you about what stage two looks like when we're moving into it, who is moving into stage two, and what can we expect in that process. And so I want to begin today by talking about the, the governor's four stages of reopening. And let me begin by reminding everyone that the statewide health order that is in place, that cities and counties cannot go beyond those health orders. And so you might hear a lot of people say, well, I'd like to do this or we'd like to do that. We can only open as the state allows us to open. And so that is all a partnership that we're doing as a, as a community. But within each stage, there is flexibility for cities and for counties. And so we know that there are four stages to economic recovery, and I wanna review those. The first stage is safety and preparedness, which is the stage we are in today. The second stage is reopening lower risk workplaces, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in just a few minutes. The third stage is higher risk workplaces, and the fourth stage is ending the, the safer at home order, uh, which uh, is, uh, is still a while away from where we are today. Um, but those are the four stages. So as we know, we have been in stage number one. And for us, stage one has been all about being prepared and being ready. And I want to walk you through what that's looked like in Long Beach and why we believe we have met this challenge and why our medical professionals believe that we have met the requirements of stage one. Uh, first, we know that we are in a health crisis and addressing COVID-19 remains our top priority. And so all of these decisions are guided by our health officials. Since we declared our initial health emergency on March the 4th, we have done an enormous amount. And I wanna begin by talking about logistics and preparation. We have begun an enormous distribution and logistic process within the city. Since March 4th, we have distributed over 1.5 million PPE, 31,995 masks, 16,000 gowns, over 9,000 cloth and sewn masks, and we've made over 860 deliveries across the city as it relates to PPE. Now, this PPE, including the 1.5 million number, has gone to our first responders within our city, 
has gone to our healthcare facilities across the city and has gone to our long-term facilities across the community. These have been our, our, nurse, our nursing skilled centers, our senior homes, and of course our shelters. And we've also provided PPE to numerous nonprofits that have reached out and asked for our support. And this has been small clinics across the community. So your city, our city, our community, has been involved in ensuring that our city has the PPE necessary and that our hospitals have the PPE necessary to move through this first stage. We are also looking at additional data. And I wanna show you this next graph. As of today, you can clearly see that Long Beach continues to track below LA County as it relates both to the rate of positive cases and fatalities. Now, it's important to note that every single death is a person and is a real family of who we pray for and mourn for. And you can see that as it relates to Long Beach and LA County, that we are trending below when you look at the 100,000 cases per population. And I mention that because, as you're gonna hear in a minute, uh, we are encouraged by the state to move as regions as we reopen our community. But counties and cities will be different. And the Long Beach Health Department, which runs our city, will have slightly some differences in the way we govern our city than LA County will. And you see that reflected also in some of the numbers. It's important to note that we've begun flattening this curve. And I wanna show you this next graph that we have, which really shows the, what I believe is the most important uh, number, one of the most important numbers that we see, and that is hospitalizations. When you look at hospitalizations in Long Beach, you can see that for the course of the last 20, 25 days, that hospitalizations generally have remained flat. Now, what are the difference between these two bars? Uh, the, as you can see that the lighter bar is the reported cases that we give you every day uh, when, when we watch these updates, there are reports on hospitalization. The other, uh, the blue or the darker blue graph is actually the more factual number once hospitals kind of catch up on their reporting. And so we report daily, but then every week or so, we get updates from the hospital that might give updates depending on how it's doing and, and the data that they have as to the exact hospitalization date. And so if you look at these numbers, you can see that we certainly had our largest spike early in April. But since that initial spike, uh, the numbers have remained relatively flat. Why is this is such an important graph? Because we know that the, the state and the governor are looking at a 14-day cycle of hospitalizations and trying to see how communities are doing. You can see by Long Beach's numbers that not only have we met 14 days, but we are almost close to 20 to 25 days of these, of these numbers being generally flat. And I caution us, these numbers could change at, at, at any minute. And I wanna talk about that in a minute. We are watching these on a daily basis. And now I wanna to turn to you, turn another piece of data that we're looking at, which is really important as well. And these are our Long Beach COVID cases, timelined by actual episode date. And if you can see this graphic, you can see that not only have we dramatically increased testing, where we're now doing over a thousand tests a day, we've tested over uh, 12,000 individuals across the city. But you can see also that timeline by episode, there is actually a slight decrease that is happening. And I wanna put your attention on the yellow bar. You see a yellow kind of dotted um, uh, line that is going through the numbers. That actually takes into account the seven day average. And so when you look at the seven day average, which is a better way of looking at this chart, which is how our medical team and our data uh, folks look at, you can see that we are trending downwards as it relates to new cases and new episodes. And so th this data I just showed you uh, is all going in the right direction. 
I caution us that uh, changes that we're gonna discuss in a minute and the way data works, could, could it be different a week from now, two weeks from now, or tomorrow? Absolutely. We don't know. We can only look at what's happened up to this point and trends. And so um, uh, just please know that data is, uh, is, is movable and can change quickly. But the signs are good and pointing in the right direction. Now I want to talk to you about our hospital beds and our capacity. We've been talking about what is, what is this crisis really about? And what this crisis has really been about from day one, in large part, has been ensuring that our hospitals have the capacity that they need for any surge in patients. We know people are going to get infected. We want to minimize that risk. And we want to flatten that curve because we want there to be enough hospital beds, ventilators, personnel, and PPE ready to take care of you and your family. That is the most important thing. And so let's look at how our hospital bed capacity is number and look at this graphic above. We have our area hospitals have a capacity of 1,500 beds daily. Of those 1,500 beds, the city has surged that capacity. We have 100 additional beds at the convention center. We have the ability, another 400 beds that we put all across the city as well. If you look at staffing, we're looking at many factors related to this capacity. Our bed usage right now in Long Beach is at 50% of normal capacity. That means that our hospitals have room and have the ability to bring in new folks that might get infected or that are battling COVID-19. Area hospitals have averaged 50, 55 patients daily in April, as you can see. Sometimes it's been lower than that in the 40s. Uh, but it's been about that 50 range, 50, between 50 and 55. And we have the capacity in our hospitals. We also have 225 ventilators available at our hospitals. The average use over the last month has been about 30% of that on any given day. And I mention all of that because it's so important that we understand that looking at this data and information is how our medical professionals are making decisions about what we can do next. And so that's been critical for me to walk you all through that information. Now, what are we doing next? We've just talked about stage one. And on testing and preparedness, we are going through that. There, it doesn't mean that we've done a perfect job or we've gotten everything exactly right, but we are, we are, we are making good progress. Now I want to talk to you about stage two. The governor, as you know, just earlier this week, allowed municipalities as early as this Friday to move into what he is calling stage two. Stage two is lower risk activities. And in this stage, the city of Long Beach, because we have our own health department, can really guide our own future. Uh, you may be aware that earlier today, uh, the city, uh, the, the county of Los Angeles, with its partnership in cities, have already begun releasing their plans into how they're going to reopen their economy. Generally, Long Beach has aligned with the county to ensure that we have a unified voice across all 88 cities in LA County. But we're, there are also going to be some differences, which I'm going to talk to you about today, in how and what we reopen. But generally, we will be aligned with the County of Los Angeles. And that, by the way, is a recommendation from the state is to try to do that regional alignment. So what are we going to do in Long Beach? I want to start by uh, talking about this in two categories. One is going to be about retail and what we're doing this upcoming May the 8th, which is Friday. And then we will have some additional activities that will reopen on May the 11th, which is Monday. So let's first talk about May 8th and Friday. We are, uh, are, um, are looking forward to partnering with the County of Los Angeles and the city on our May 8th reopenings. So what will be reopening on May 8th in Long Beach or what we'll have the ability to. If you own a 
a florist, if you're a toy store, a bookstore, a clothing store, a music store, or a sporting goods store, all of those smaller retail retailers will be allowed to begin to open with curbside pickup only. The actual stores themselves will not be allowed to open inside for walk-in uh, shopping, but there will be process set up so that folks can drive up and pick up things at the storefronts and at the stores. Now, it's important to note that the state is not allowing inside shopping at retail. So even if Long Beach wanted to open that, it's not allowed in the statewide order. But we are allowed to open florists, toy stores, bookstores, clothing stores, and sporting goods stores for curbside pickup only. So that will begin on May 8th. We will also allow car, deal car dealership showrooms to open up. Now, the car dealership showrooms and the small retailers will all need to follow strict physical distancing, uh, face covering and mask uh, rules, and infection control protocols that will be laid out by the Long Beach Health Department in the days ahead. And so you can be sure, if you are a small business owner and immediately have a lot of questions, we are gonna be putting up a lot of information on the Long Beach COVID website over the course of the next couple of days, including checklists, resources, guides into how you can reopen safely. What else is going to be opening up on May the 8th? So now we've talked about retail. We're, we're opening up that first phase of retail on May the 8th. On the issue of outdoor recreation, some outdoor recreation will be open on May the 8th, and the rest will open up on May the 11th, and I'll explain that in just, in just a minute. In addition, on May the 8th, trails and our wonderful nature trails and walks that we have across the city, as well as public and or private golf courses, will also open on May the 8th, and that aligns with the Los Angeles County order as well, and the governor's guidance as it relates to outdoor recreation. And so uh, trails, of which we have many, our wetland trails, uh, our, our, our golf courses, those can begin transitioning to open on Friday. And then on Monday, and this is where uh, there will be some differences with Los Angeles County. On May the 11th, there will, we will also be doing some small additional openings. On Monday, May 11th, we will be opening up our parking lots adjacent to our parks so that families can come. You will be able to walk through all of our parks. There still will not be gathering at parks. You'll be able to walk through our parks. We are also opening up tennis centers across the city. So if you, uh, to, it, to be done in a safe way, and we'll have, ex we'll have details on how to do that. There's some types of activities within that that won't be possible, but tennis centers will begin to open up. And we will be opening up the beach, bike, and walk path only in the city of Long Beach. And so our beach, gathering on the beach, swimming at the beach will not be allowed. But you will be able to cycle or walk along the beach path in the city. And so as it relates to parks and beaches, trails, walking, starting May the 11th, and why May the 11th? Because we're also going to, over the course of this weekend, our teams at Parks and Rec are gonna be doing a major cleaning. We're gonna disinfect a lot of our bathrooms. We're gonna make sure that our parks and our beach spaces are clean and they're ready for, for, for the public come Monday. But I want to be also very clear. We will have strict enforcement, particularly on the beach with lifeguards, and firefighters and police, that if gathering begins to occur or other actions that are unsafe and are not being distanced, that enforcement will occur. We need people to follow the rules. We are providing relief and we need your help in supporting that. And so those gives you an idea of the differences between what's gonna happen on May 8th, which is small retail, trails and golf, 
and May 11th, which is uh, the beach back bike path and walking trail, the tennis centers, and the parking lots at our parks. That being said, I want to just remind us also that there's a lot of other things that can't open. So we still cannot have restaurants with, with, with dining facilities. Offices are still not open. Uh, many of our cultural centers and, and museums are still not open. Other businesses are not open. And all of those have not been given the green light by the state to reopen yet. And so as soon as there's guidance, then we'll have more information on those in the weeks ahead. I want to, uh, before I turn this over to, uh, to Dr. Davis, I just want to say that um, Long Beach has its own health department. The county has its own health department. These decisions were made not just in coordination with the health department, but also understanding that we are our own large community and city. Long Beach is roughly the same size as Atlanta, Georgia. We control our own health destiny within our community. And so I want people to understand and know that while we will align with the county uh, when possible, there will oftentimes be some differences that relate back to the difference in data that you are seeing in Long Beach versus the rest of the county. And as a reminder, that once the things begin to open this Friday and Monday, over the course of the next two weeks after those openings and the weeks ahead, we will be monitoring all of that data I showed you earlier at hospitalizations, positive cases, uh, deaths as, as they relate to other places across the state and country, because if there are spikes or if we need to make adjustments, we will do so. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is the health of our community. Please remember that we had positive cases and deaths and hospitalizations before these reopenings. And we will have hospitalizations and unfortunately deaths and, and, and other types of, 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 of measures that we track during this reopening. It's a, it really is about how we can best prepare and ensure that our medical professionals have what they need and that we're not seeing any spikes. And so we ask for your support. Wear a face covering, if, uh, uh, please, when you go into any of these stores, when you're outside, unless you're walking through your neighborhood. Physical distance when you're at our, our trails or walking through our parks. Be responsible over the next few days. And if folks can stay home, if you are a vulnerable population, if you are a senior, please continue to stay home. Don't put yourself at risk. Let's do this together, and I look forward to next week sharing our progress and how we're doing. So thank you. I know that was a lot of information, but we'll continue to put more information out in the days ahead. So if you have questions, your answers are coming. Uh, and with that, I want to turn this over to Dr. Davis, who's going to give us more of an update. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'll start with a brief update on our numbers. We now have 791 Long Beach residents who have tested positive for COVID-19. I'm sad to report that we've lost one Long Beach resident uh, to the virus since our last briefing on Monday. The, man, the patient was a man in his 70s with underlying health conditions, and our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and loved ones. I'd like to uh, acknowledge National Nurses Week. Today, May 6, launches National Nurses Week to recognize and celebrate the contributions that nurses make across our country. We appreciate all of the nurses who are on the front lines of care during this COVID-19 pandemic. Nurses courageously step forward amidst fear, uncertainty, and overwhelming challenges. Nurses sacrifice time away from their families and risk their own well-being to care for others. They comfort terrified and apprehensive patients and grieve with those who have lost loved ones. Within the city of Long Beach, nurses have been leaders in our COVID response. They've run our testing program, both at our drive-throughs. They've collected test samples um, at our drive-throughs, but also at people's ha homes and in our long-term care facilities. They staff our shelter and isolation sites. They treat people at our rapid assessment clinic lead outbreak investigations in our long-term care facilities, 
and, con and conduct contact investigations. When not responding to COVID-19, nurses play a vital role at the health department. They provide immunizations, treat TB, STD, and HIV positive patients, provide family planning, conduct home visits, support people experiencing homelessness and older adults, and much more. Uh, we are so grateful for all of the nurses serving the city of Long Beach. Um, thank you for your commitment, compassion, and extraordinary skill. Uh, we could not uh, function at the health department without our nurses. So I wanna end by mentioning our contact tracing. To more fully open the city, we need robust contact tracing. Along with robust testing, which we have, contact tracing is a very effective tool for limiting community spread. The Long Beach Health Department already does contact tracing. This is where we ask people who are positive for COVID-19 who they've been around, and then we ensure that those people quarantine for 14 days um, to then stop the spread of COVID-19 um, from that person. So we're doing that now, and as our testing capacity goes up, we'll be staffing up so we can meet the increased need. The state has partnered with UCSF and UCLA in a virtual contact tracing training program. The city of Long Beach will be piloting the training program for the state and will be able to provide valuable feedback into the process. I just wanna end uh, by uh, re-emphasizing what the mayor mentioned. As we relax our uh, restrictions, the safer at home order, and more of us are moving about, it's gonna be even more important that we uh, follow those practices in order to limit the spread of the virus. It'll be even more important as we're able to get out more, that we're washing our hands on a regular basis, that we're covering our faces, that we're really keeping that six feet distance um, that we're using hand sanitizer, and that if we are sick, that we don't venture out, that we stay at home. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis, and I'll turn it over to Jake, who will have some uh, questions. Thank you, Mary Garcia. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, the first question we have coming from our media is from Rachel from Channel 7. Go ahead, Rachel. Thanks. Hey, so um, as we're heading into stage two, I'm wondering how will the city be monitoring or uh, enforcing that businesses are complying with the different stages of reopening? Because I think there are a lot of businesses out there that kind of fall into this gray area. And the state has had a lot of like very specific guidelines like sporting goods stores or clothing stores. And I think there are a lot of small businesses in Long Beach that I can think of that are kind of like in this gray area. So is the city doing like any small business outreach during this transition? Uh, yes, so a couple of things. So one I would say is um, it, it, essentially if you are a small retailer, uh, the, a florist, toy store, bookstore, clothing store, um, a boutique, a music store, sporting good, you can, you can open up with curbside pickup only. That is, the, that is the rule set by the state and now it will be set by the city. We're going to be hosting, I mean, we're doing one to, later today and over the next few days, uh, all the business associations across the city, uh, if you belong to a business improvement district, uh, all of those partnerships will be having briefings and conference calls, and we'll be bringing together industries over the next few days to answer questions. So please be on a lookout for that. And also our economic development site at the longbeach.gov webpage will have a lot of information for these businesses. But if you're not one of these businesses that's retail specific, and hasn't been called out, um, you're likely not allowed to open unless we, you, you are listed in the health order. And the health order itself uh, will be up, I, I believe, in the next day or so. Mm -hmm. And so that is coming. Um, and we know there's going to be some confusion. It's not going to be perfect. There will be some gray areas. But we hope to walk people through that and to answer everyone's question as we, as we move forward. Uh, it's really important for folks that can't reopen to understand and know that that is who is not allowed to reopen as well, which is why I mentioned some of those. All right, moving forward, we will have the next question from Kelly Puente from The Post. Go ahead, Kelly. 
Yes, um, with hospitalization rates remaining flat or slightly decreasing and um, death rates remaining lower than that of the county, can you talk a little bit more about what indicators you're looking at for moving into phase three and just a little bit more on that timeline and what that would look like? Sure, I, I can give some response to that, Dr. Davis, if you have any other uh, medical thoughts on it. So I think uh, first it's important for people to remember that the, the city doesn't decide when we move into stage three. So that is not up to us. The state first has to allow stage three to begin for then the city to contemplate going into stage three. And so within stage two, where is it's currently being phased in. And so um, for, for example, uh, uh, we talked about di dining inside restaurants. Um, that is listed in the state as part of phase two but it's not in this first group of retail and businesses that the governor is allowing to reopen. And so we will move as quickly as first and foremost is allowed by the state and the guidance, and second is, is supported by our own internal data and our own internal numbers that, that you refer to. And so there is no going into stage three unless the governor allow, uh, opens it up to cities. I will make a, a quick note. Uh, the state is allowing cities and counties to apply essentially for an expedited stage three. However, that is really a program that is set up for rural counties and rural communities, um, of which measures to meet uh, essentially are for counties that have had um, uh, no deaths or, or very few. And one of the key measures of, of, of moving through stage two quicker, for example, is having, is having uh, no fatalities over 14 days. And so um, that's not something that we should expect that, that, that cities or counties like Long Beach, LA, Orange County, uh, uh, the Bay Area will, will be able to, to, to meet. And so I think as soon as the governor gives, uh, let, let's put it this way, we have to get through stage two before we can even think about stage three. And we're not even through all of stage two. We're at the first part of stage two and we've got to make sure that this first part is safe. Mm -hmm. Hospitalizations don't go up. Mm -hmm. People are following the rules. Uh, there's not a burden in our hospitals. And if we see that, that at that point we're okay, statewide, the governor will make some decisions about what we can do next. And then the city will make our own decisions about our own timing. So if that explains the process. Thank you, Mayor. The next question is from Haley from the Press-Telegram. Go ahead, Haley. Hi, uh, yeah, my question is about um, the recreation areas. I know some um, cities in Orange County, including Seal Beach, are looking at reopening their beaches for water activities, including swimming. Um, so is that something that Long Beach is looking at? And if so, when might that type of thing fall into the reopening process? Uh, I mean, we're looking obviously at everything. We look at everything all the time, but we're at this, at this moment, uh, Long Beach is not reopening its full, the full beach uh, to swimming and other types of activities. We are still limit. We are still limiting uh, gatherings at the beach, uh, not allowing gatherings at the beach or at uh, parks. And part of that is because even though our indicators are moving in the right direction, um, we do know that the density of cases in Orange County and those other communities is less than Long Beach and in, and LA County, and so they have different um, uh, needs and desires. What the, you know, what's happening down south is is, uh, is they're looking at their own indicators and we're looking at ours. And so uh, we would love to get to a point where we can fully reopen the beach and fully reopen our parks. But Long Beach is just not there yet. And it, we and, and our medical team doesn't believe it, that it's safe to do so at this time. Dr. Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we will be monitoring uh, the staged opening like the mayor mentioned. So as we kind of get through the next few days or so and kind of see how that pans out, um, then we've been making further decisions. Thank you very much, Dr. Davis. Now that we uh, are going to transition over to some of our questions from our Facebook followers here on, on Facebook Live, and Dr. Davis, while we have you there, uh, can you give us a little bit of background about contact uh, tracing? And really, as it relates to COVID-19, how are we supposed to do contact tracing if you're only supposed to get tested if you show symptoms? Can you give us a conversation relating to uh, asymptomatic testing, if that's in the future? What does that potentially look like as it relates to contact tracing? Because that's certainly a part of this phased approach. Right. 
So thank you for that question. So basically, contact tracing is whenever we find a case. So whether you only test people who are symptomatic or you test people who are asymptomatic, as soon as we have a positive case, then that's when the contact tracing would start. So as we expand our testing um, and really aggressively test those who are symptomatic, even mildly symptomatic, we will catch more people. And um, if we expand beyond that, then yes, we may catch more people on top of that. Um, once we have that positive case though, then uh, basically what contact tracing is, is that you um, kind of talk to the person about all the different places that they've been um, while they were in their contagious period. Um, and then you would uh, contact all those people. And so it could be that they went to an event. And so you may have to write a letter saying, if you were at this event during this time, you may be at risk for COVID-19 and this is what you should do about it. Um, or it could be that there's specific uh, people that you would contact and say, you know, you're, you've been exposed to somebody. And basically what exposed means is you've been around somebody who's infected, who could have infected you. And so then we tell you what to do, which is basically to quarantine for 14 days. Um, so that's kind of the overall what contact tracing is. There's a lot that's involved. Um, it's kind of this whole step long process from the moment that you get that positive test and then do the interview of the positive person and then have that person identify all the people that they've been in contact with and then contact all those people um, and then monitor both the person, the original person who was sick, um, and then all of their contacts, you know, calling them on a regular basis and what have you and, you know, making sure that they're okay and if they need anything. Um, each case is predicted or estimated to have about 10 contacts. So you can see where that would be this um, very large uh, labor intensive process. Dr. Davis, while we have you there, uh, thank you for that answer. I think we, on Monday we talked about mental health and we talked about the mm -hmm. concerns and things that are, are, are fears that people have. And certainly this process of reopening generates a lot of fear for people. Uh, there's a lot of excitement, but also a lot of concern and, and trepidation. Mm -hmm. That said, if we do see a spike or we do see things start to change, can you elaborate in the plan or the, if we do need to transition quickly, what does that look like and how will we make those assessments uh, for our viewers? So I, I feel that right now the important thing is for all of us to assess our own risk. So you know yourself, you know who you live with, you know what your health status is, and you also know what your mental health is and what you uh, really, um, what's really important to you. And so I think as things get relaxed, each of us is going to have to make decisions on a regular basis about what it is, uh, we want to do and what risk we're willing to take. Um, we're not, for the foreseeable future, ever get going to get to a zero risk uh, of COVID-19. And so it's basically you assessing your risk and making your best decisions uh, with all the you know reputable information that's out there um, about whether you feel like it's necessary to uh, do whatever the thing is that you're you know, wanting to leave the house to do, whether it's work uh, or recreation or what have you. And then also trying to do it in as safe a way as possible. Um, I love the library. So that's what I really, really, really miss. I cannot wait until it opens again. Am I gonna go and browse as soon as it opens? Maybe not. I might order everything online and then just go pick it up. So I think that that's what everybody is going to have to do is kind of make that decision. Like for me, I want the library, but I'm gonna adapt how I interact with the library. So that's what I would recommend for everyone. Thank you, Dr. Davis. And before we switch over to the mayor, I, there is a, a couple of questions, obviously related to health, uh, pertaining to the heat wave. We have a lot of heat coming up and expect the next forecast for the next few days. What's the plan to address the heat? What's the plan? To, what's, what are we encouraging families to do to, to try to stay cool? And does the city have a plan for cooling centers? So we do have a plan for the city of Long Beach. So we monitor what's called a heat index, which takes into account um, both the actual temperature and our humidity. Um, and we, so we're always monitoring that. And then when we rise above a certain level, then um, we, it will trigger an advisory um, or the activation of cooling centers. So um, 
As soon as that happens, we will definitely be putting out information about cooling centers and how to do that safely with physical distancing um, and uh, you know all of the other types of facial coverings and what have you. Um, and in the meantime, I think it's really important to drink a lot of water, um, to uh, stay out of the sun, like the direct sun, you know, if you are out there, of course, wear sunscreen. Um, if you have underlying like medical conditions, like respiratory conditions, then you probably don't want to be doing a lot of um, strenuous exercise out in the heat. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Now moving over to the mayor, a couple of questions that we have here for you. Sure. And this uh, relative to uh, some of the conversation we're having to the phased opening and reopening of some of our businesses. And, and there's a lot of questions about uh, guidance for churches. Can you talk a little bit about what churches look like? And then we'll get into some of these other questions relating to some of these other specifics. Right. And so um, uh, I, I think that obviously um, for a lot of individuals, particularly people of faith, I consider myself one of those. And my, my, my family certainly is. Um, it is, fr it is frustrating and hard not to be able to reconnect um, through our, through our places of worship. Um, it's also, uh, churches, uh, places of worship, uh, are, um, not yet, uh, places that are being allowed because of, uh, of, of gathering and physical distancing, uh, per the statewide order. Um, obviously that is something that we look to in the, in the future, but it's just not something that is part of this initial stage. Um, as soon as we, uh, we are there, um, uh, we will move as quickly as we can, uh, as long as health, as health conditions apply, but it's just not where it's at right now. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Some of the other questions that we're seeing here uh, really are relative to the parks and the playgrounds for the kids and the skateboard parks. We've talked about that. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about, uh, uh the, the idea for our parks as it relates to summer camp program. There's a concern about what are we doing for the summer camp? So we have a great parks program in the summer. What's the plan for that? And obviously registration potentially is coming up very soon. Do we, do we foresee that that's still happening? Yeah, we don't know yet. Uh, first, I think it's important to note that uh, parks, you, the playgrounds are still closed. Uh, you cannot play team sports uh, you know, uh, in, in playgrounds. Um, uh, but you can walk through parks. You can use you know, the hiking trails, the trails. But uh, those are just not activities that those all those activities require a, a closeness that is difficult to um, uh, to manage, uh, obviously, and to be safe. And so um, we don't know where that's at yet, but we uh, we don't expect that a lot of those activities are going to restart anytime in the you know over the course of the next couple of weeks. And so people just need to be patient um, as things are allowed. Um, there will be uh, there will be guidance. Every outdoor activity that we have mentioned today. Is, is listed as an outdoor activity that is uh, allowed by the state and that there's guidance on. Other types of activities that, that we would love to, you know, to, to enjoy and that kids especially wanna play like uh, baseball or, or, or basketball or soccer, those are not recommended at this time by the state guidelines or any of the local jurisdiction guidelines. And so we're just not sure yet where that's gonna end up. And as soon as we know, we'll let folks know. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in, in the presence of time, we want to make sure that we can tell everyone, uh, there's a lot of questions coming out specifically related to the individual things, whether it's pet grooming, whether it's uh, different types of events or, or local businesses. Uh, please make sure you are following us at www.longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 for additional information. That's where a lot of this stuff you'll be able to find after the press conference uh, that will be able to provide you additional guidance and direction. Is that, Mayor, I think, thank you. I think that's absolutely right. And so just make sure that all that, all that information, once the order comes out, that uh, will be before, before this Friday date, that health order will list exactly in detail each, each type of industry and, and the rules. And so we'll, we'll look forward to that. And I'll have more to report on Friday, obviously. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and turn this over to Alice Castellanos from the Health Department, who will give us a summary in Spanish. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Alcalde, y gracias, Doctora Davis. Muy buenas tardes. Gracias por estar con nosotros esta tarde, um, 6 de mayo. Eh, primeramente, queremos empezar que estamos muy orgullosos de todos uh, que vivimos en la ciudad de Long Beach por seguir las órdenes de más seguro en el hogar. Pero también queremos dar un poquito de los datos. Hay muchos datos esta tarde, pero voy a tratar la mejor manera de hacer un resumen. Este, el gobernador del estado de California, recuerden que desde el lunes este, les avisamos que hay cuatro etapas. Hoy todavía seguimos en la primera etapa, es donde um, 
nos enfocamos más en la seguridad y preparación. Eh, la etapa 2, que es la etapa donde queremos um, seguir en, los, en estos próximos días, más temprano que el viernes, 8 de mayo, es de los, que los lugares de trabajo de menor riesgo y um, negocios pequeños serán, uh, se van a reabrir. Y voy a hablar un poquito de cuáles negocios son esos que se van a reabrir. La etapa número 3 son lugares de trabajo de mayor riesgo y en la final etapa que es la etapa número cuatro, es el fin de la orden y el fin de quedarse en casa. Um, eso es cuando los grandes eventos puedan uh, reunirse como conciertos, festivales y esas cosas. Y realmente estamos buscando um, últimamente una vacuna y tratamiento efectivo para poder terminar y, y concluir con la etapa número cuatro. Pero le queremos decir también que el gobernador ha anunciado que desde tan temprano como este viernes, 8 de mayo, reabrir um, los negocios pequeños como las florerías, tiendas de libros, tiendas de música, de juguetes, uh, pero solamente con ventas de recoger a la curva o afuera en la calle, por decir, todavía no estamos listos para que la gente entre a, los, a estos negocios y hacer sus compras físicamente adentro de la tienda, pero sí pueden ordenar cosas, productos, materiales y recogerlos a, afuera. También no estamos listos para reabrir como restaurantes y cosas así porque es muy riesgoso. Lo último que queremos ver es reabrir ciertos negocios y luego tener que regresar a cerrar las cosas de nuevo. Queremos también, um, sé que hace unos momentos cuando hablaba el alcalde, vieron unas imágenes de algunos números y algunos datos y nomás voy a hacer un resumen corto sobre esos datos que vimos en la pantalla. Desde el 4 de marzo, que fue cuando empezamos um, esta epidemia, este, hemos podido proveer eh, protección, equipo de protección a varias organizaciones, especialmente a los hospitales, los centros de, enferme de enfermería de largo plazo, más de 3, 30 millones de máscaras del N95, uh, más de 16 mil um, vestidos de protección para los, las, el personal médico y también hemos dado mucho equipo de protección a los centros de médicos de la comunidad. Ese también les queremos uh, recordar que es muy importante proteger, seguir protegiéndose, uh, sea la manera entre, en que vayamos avanzando en esta etapa número dos. Sabemos que es muy frustrante, sabemos que viene el calor, sabemos que algunas otras ciudades y condados están abriendo los parques y las playas, pero nosotros todavía no estamos um, preparándonos para eso. Lo que sí podemos decirles que pueden abrir este fin de semana es los paseos donde se camina sobre la playa, pero no la playa en fin como para nadar. Este, también puede, puede todavía asistir, ir a un parque y caminar en las áreas donde se puede caminar o en los paseos de naturaleza y, y cosas así. Pero recordarles que no pueden ir los niños a jugar en los juegos de los, los, en los sitios de los parques todavía. Ha visto muchas preguntas sobre uh, los programas de actividades de deportes, pero eso todavía, como se, um, eso significa que serían los grupos más grandes. Personas están, todavía no estamos preparados para que se junten you know, en grupos muy grandes, sea en tiendas, en restaurantes o en actividades deportivas. Uh, también en las gráficas vimos lo importante que fue que nuestra meta desde el primer día fue que no tuviéramos uh, problemas de, de, del número de camas que están disponibles en los hospitales y eso nos orgullece en compartir que estamos muy bien en este departamento. Hay más que suficiente personal médico, más que suficiente camas uh, disponibles por si se enferman las personas y es por eso que podemos entrar a la etapa número dos. Este, también queremos decir que tenemos más de 255 ventiladores y solo alrededor de 30% están en uso, por lo que también tenemos capacidad ahí. Este, en los próximos días se, vamos a publicar más información sobre nuestro pedido más seguro en casa. Estamos preparados, estamos coordinando y volveremos a abrir según los datos y la ciencia, 
no nos vamos a apresurar y solo quiero decir nuevamente que tan orgulloso que estamos de la gente de Long Beach para poder hacer este procedimiento lo más seguro posible. Um, muchas, muchas áreas del país han sufrido mucho peor que nuestra situación en la ciudad y de eso estamos orgullosos y queremos seguir en esos pasos. Debido a la experiencia de nuestro Departamento de Salud, um, nuestra coordinación del condado y el estado, requeremos recordar que vamos a seguir todas las órdenes del condado, pero como nosotros en la ciudad de Long Beach tenemos nuestro propio Departamento de Salud, sí podemos también coordinar y hacer nuestras propias pólizas sobre la reapertura de nuestra ciudad. También queremos a, a platicar un poquito sobre el rastreo de contacto. Para abrir completamente la ciudad necesitamos seguir unos seguimiento de contactos robusto. Entre más pruebas y sitios, sitios de pruebas tengamos en la ciudad, obviamente vamos a ver que los números de pruebas positivas van a subir también. So, eso significa que cada vez que tenemos un resultado positivo, nuestro uh, equipo de epidemiología llaman a las personas, hacen una investigación para hacerles preguntas como, por ejemplo, en dónde trabajan, en qué sitios estuvieron públicamente para poder rastrear otros posiblemente contactos que también posiblemente pueden salir positivos. Junto con las pruebas sólidas que tenemos, el rastreo de contactos es una herramienta realmente efectiva para limitar la propagación en la comunidad. El Departamento de Salud de Long Beach ya realiza el seguimiento de contactos y a medida que aumenta nuestra capacidad de prueba, estamos dotando del personal que podamos satisfacer la necesidad. Obviamente, entre más sube el número de, de casos positivos, más personal vamos a necesitar para que hagan llamadas y empiecen las investigaciones. El estado también está en proceso de desarrollar una aplicación um, para que pueda ayudarnos a rastrear estos datos. So, ten tendremos más información en los, en los próximos días también. En algunas noticias más livianas, y queremos compartir que esta semana estamos celebrando el reconocimiento de las enfermeras. Hoy, el 6 de mayo, se celebra la Semana Nacional de Enfermería para reconocer las contribuciones que hacen los profesionales de enfermería en todo el país. Agradecemos a todas las enfermeras que están en, el, en las primeras líneas de atención durante esta pandemia del coronavirus. Las enfermeras sacrifican el tiempo lejos de sus familias, se arriesgan sus propio bienestar para cuidar a los demás, consuenan a los uh, pacientes y a, los, a las familias que desafortunadamente han perdido a familiares uh, por este virus. En la ciudad de Long Beach, las enfermeras responden al coronavirus, colectando muestras de prueba, dotando de personal y refugios y sitios de aislamiento y realizando investigaciones de contacto con parte de la, del programa de control de enfermedades transmisibles. También un saludo y un agradecimiento especial para todas las enfermeras de la Unidad Reserva Médica de Long Beach que se ha estado sirviendo en la comunidad como voluntarios y tratan a pacientes que están enfermos en la clínica de evaluación rápida que ahorita todavía está abierta en el Colegio de Long Beach sobre la PCH. Estamos muy agradecidos por todas las enfermeras que sirven a la ciudad de Long Beach y gracias por todos sus compromisos, su compasión y habilidad extraordinaria. Um, eso es todo por hoy, pero recuerden, pueden uh, recibir más información y datos importantes después de esta uh, conferencia de prensa en el sitio de web de la ciudad de Long Beach eh, del coronavirus. Gracias. Muchas gracias. También quiero uh, decir que este jueves, Thursday, este jueves a las una y media, uh, vamos a tener una uh, town hall en español para la comunidad uh, que habla español. Uh, es jueves a las una y media y la información está en las páginas de la ciudad, uh, de Facebook uh, y el número. So todo, por, por favor, si aquí uh, tienes um, cosas que quieres decir o preguntar, uh, este jueves a las una y media en español, un town hall para COVID-19 para la comunidad latina. So muchas gracias. And again, thanks for watching. I know there's a lot to, re to report. Uh, we will have uh, probably a lot more on Friday just to get everybody ready for, um, for the weekend. So thanks again.